Amen. It's going to be all right. When we, it's going to be all right. I'm not going to be concerned about it. Everything's going to be all right. I'm going to obey God, and God's going to take care of what I can't take care of. That's the way I see it. Father, we come to you now in this time. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time today. We thank you, Lord God, for your holy word. Thank you. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would move in this place tonight. God, I'm asking you to touch the heart of these people. As the speaker come today, Father, I ask you that you would anoint, empower, with revelation knowledge and with wisdom. And Father, I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory for it in advance. Father, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in the glorious and mighty majestic name of Jesus. And all the grief that said, Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We believe that God, y'all may be seated. Amen. Right now. We believe that we serve a good God and that God is able to make all grace abound us. We always have all sufficiency and all things do abound to all good works, every good work. Amen. So I want to encourage you tonight to just put your trust and your confidence in the Lord regardless of what it looked like. Just obey him, and I guarantee you, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Because I believe that God is going to, I believe God wants to speak tonight to our hearts. Amen. That's why, uh, that's why we're going to have a, a, a different way, a different way of service tonight. Amen. Because we want to hear from different directions, see what God is saying. Because we're coming to, tonight is the tonight is the final night of the of the election, and they're going to be uh, deciding very soon who is the president. And so, uh, so we're going to, we we believe in God that, that the will of God will be done in that area. Amen. But right now, I want you to uh, welcome my brother, uh, brother Elder Murphy, to come and share with us today. Amen. And then we're going to go from there. And God is going to be glorified. Hallelujah. Go ahead on, brother. Oh, be God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. First, giving all praises to God, to the pastor, and to the first lady. We give God the glory, the praise, and the honor. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus, asking that we decrease as you increase in the name of Jesus, and not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Speak, Lord Jesus, in the name of as high above every name. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite your attention to Matthew chapter 5, starting with verse 1 through 12, the Beatitudes. We're entitled the introduction here is just to if just to give you a context of where just happened and what just took place in chapter 4 Jesus has just called his first disciples Simon Peter and Andrew his brother he called James and John the son of Zebedee Jesus had been ministering in Galilee, healing and teaching and preaching the good news in their synagogues. 
But Jesus wanted the disciples to know, and he wants us to know, we have to develop a certain kind of character to be pleasing in our service to God. So he taught them the kingdom's attitude. And reading, starting here in chapter 5, he says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you hearing um, as he taught these beatitudes blessed here actually means not just happy but it's a delightful happy that comes from within meaning as the disciples accepted Jesus Christ as he chose to us and having Jesus on the inside of your heart and him sitting on the throne of your heart it gives us an inner peace and an inner joy. A joy that no man can steal. That says that what? No matter what's going on, I got joy. Unspeakable joy. So, when he said, blessed, the blessed there is because I got Jesus, I'm okay. And I'm happy about it. And that's something that the devil, even the devil, can't steal from me. And here, that poor in spirit don't mean broke. It means to be humble in spirit. Right. And here, that they that mourn, you that cry out to the Lord with an earnestness in your heart, notice what he says, for they shall be comforted, meaning the Holy Spirit will comfort you. He is a comforter. That's what he was sent to do. That's his responsibility. Yeah. And he will do exactly what he said he would do. So we want to, it's okay to cry before the Lord and lay out before the Lord. Whether you're a man or a woman. Yeah. And not feel afraid to let your feelings be known. Some of us get beside ourselves and we say, we don't want to let folks know how we feel. Well, God said, in my presence is the fullness of joy. Yeah. Amen. And we are protected in his presence and under the blood. Yes. So we we'll want to get in his presence and cry out to him, knowing that, know this one thing, the devil can't read your mind. Yes. That's right. So your response is what he's looking for because he's after your faith. He want to see where 
do you lie and how strong are you? Mm -hmm. So he'll know where to attack. But if you don't show him a weakness, then he can't attack in that area. Right. But if I'm always saying, I'm still healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. Yeah. If we constantly speak in the word, even though we may not feel like it, but as the word says in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We have to speak what the word says. Then that confuses and confounds the devil. But we have to learn that. Everybody is not taught that. So when we learn that, this is what Jesus was teaching the disciples. So that when he send them out and people start to do them wrong, don't freak out. <laughs> Handle it. And keep going. And don't. Don't wear the chips on your shoulder and take it personal. Because they did it to them that came before you. So what is he telling us? Don't, don't trip. Don't freak out when you go out witnessing and when you out talking to people and they blow you off. No, you're not the first one. They've done it too. And no, they're not attacking you they're attacking the Jesus in you. That's right. And they're attacking, and they want to attack your faith to see, will you just leave me alone? Why do you think some ask at time, uh, will you quit uh, preaching that stuff to me? Why are you always coming up to me with that stuff? And that's what they're trying to do, push you away and run you away. But the Lord said what? If you be ashamed of me, I be ashamed of you before my father. So when you go crying out to God, Lord help me, he like, I don't know him. Why he crying out to you? When I asked him to stand up for me, he didn't want to stand up. Mm -hmm. It works the same way. When we want stuff from God, we got to think about, well, what did I do? Or what didn't I do? That's, that's going to cause him not to stand up for me and be the advocate and allow the Holy Spirit to be my advocate. Yeah. Because Jesus said he is our intercessor. So just as we speak, he hands it over to the Father. So what did, so in the process of teaching his Beatitudes, he said, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness I mean for them that want to do right and them that want to know the truth he said they shall not might they shall I mean I give them the truth Yeah. I will expose the truth he said he hid the wise things from them that thought they knew everything <laughs> yeah. and then revealed the wisdom to simple people. To those of us that say, okay, I'm humble enough that Lord, okay, whatever you want to show me, I'll just receive it. That's right. I believe it. And that settles it. Because why? And I found it in your word to be true. And then I exercised it in my life yeah. and saw it come to pass. So we start living what we see happen. In chapter 23, what you would notice, they say that that is a direct, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Zealots, and the Jewish uh, sect, they tried to contradict what Jesus was teaching here. And what it does, they had eight rules that they wanted to live by legally because they were still trying to live by the law. And they said, Jesus, can this happen? He said, if you compare this with this, notice he came back in chapter and verse 17 and it's saying, one that says, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but fulfill. 
meaning I'm not coming to do away with it. I am the fulfillment of the law. He was just backing up why he was really here. Yeah. I come to not do away with that which y'all know to be the Pentateuch, the uh, written law. But I come to show you that I am the fulfillment of the law. Yeah. And that you need to receive me, not rely on the law. For what the law could not do, I can. Right. And he wanted them to receive that, but they had a hard time with that. Because they like, Jesus, where are you getting this knowledge from? Because you didn't learn it from us. You didn't sit under us and get it. So who gave you this knowledge? He said, I got it from my father. Because I and my father are one. And they had a hard time with that. Because they said, John came not eating as Jesus did and sitting with sinners. But here you come socializing and eating with sinners and we thinking that you have a devil. So what's really going on? They were persecuting and criticizing him for exercising what he knew to be true and what he said would happen. He said just as they done it to them, they would do it to me. And just as they done it to me, they're going to do it to you. So he was giving them a warning and a heads up. So he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall see God. Those of us that have to look, and he says, mercy is God giving us what we really don't deserve. So he's constantly, notice he said his mercy is new every morning. His grace is new every morning. So him giving us that kind of mercy, we have to show mercy back because it's free. Then he says, blessed are the pure in heart. This is where we have to take a heart check. He said, have you checked your heart lately. You cannot hold a grudge with someone and go to God and expect God to answer your prayer. He said, forgive that your sins may be forgiven. So we have to, when we go repent and clean our own heart and come before him with a pure heart and a pure mind that he might what? Answer us back. As he says, remember when you first got saved, he answered very quickly. Now he's trying to swear when you get older, it takes him a little longer to answer. Because mm -hmm. he wants to know, do you still love me? Like you did when you first got in? And when I was answering everything immediately, he said, you ought to trust me a little more yeah. now. And he said, if you don't see my hand, trust my plan. I'm the same God. I have not changed and I change not, which is what the word says. I'm the Lord God and I change not. I change not. So since he does not change, the purpose and plan that he has, has never changed. He said, just as he said here in verse 17, before a jot or a tittle of the law pass, he will not change. It will stay the same. And it will accomplish that which he has sent it out to do. And as he tells uh, in Zechariah, he has seven pairs of eyes roaming to and fro throughout the earth to see and as Zechariah 4 and 10 and if you want to know for sure where that's at that he has seven pairs of eyes looking to make sure that his will is being carried out Yeah. so that was a message within itself to say devil you can't stop God's ultimate 
purpose in the earth. Now, when he tried to stop Jesus, notice he couldn't stop him. Every time they tried to arrest him, he said, you didn't take my life. I laid it down. Right. I had the power to lay it down and I had the power to pick it up. And that's exactly what he did. He allowed them to take him. Glory to God. He said, and then when he did confront them with it, they were like, who is this man? And where did he come from? He said, I want you to know I'm the one sent from God by God. And that it's for God I came and I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. As he said in John 10, 10. And in that same verse, he said, but remember the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But rest assured, with a right attitude, you can overcome, as he says in Romans 8, 37, we, over, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Amen. Amen. You ready? Passed over? Tag team. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Thank you for the word and appreciate thank you, that. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's always good to hear the word of God. God is so good and he is so faithful to each of us. Probably each of you to come in the front and have a testimony. Because what God has done for your life, where he brought you from. And maybe when you went for some situations in your life that you you know that you know that he was with you mm -hmm. that man maybe your neighbor your friend was not there but you know that god was with you because through the work of the holy spirit he comforted you and he brought you out and you know that you know that god who you serve that he can continue to bring you out of the situation and you know what God also can do I like what the minister Murphy says that he quote the scriptures uh, of the blessed the poor in the heart and and you know some scriptures like when God is just uh, 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 blesses the pure in the heart you know when you pure in the heart and you sincerely uh, toward God and you say God I need help in this area lord if if this situation is not pleasing you lord bring me deliver me out um, and you know you call out to god and this is what it's mean to bless the pure in the heart that you sincerely toward god and and some of you may be struggle in some areas in your life and you know that you should not be in a certain relationship so maybe in some um you know, with certain individual, but you don't know how to come out of that. But you know, God, He know how to bring you out of that situation. A years ago, before I was, um, you know, obviously married or even no pastor Larry, um, I was a single woman and I was serving the Lord no. and I was so on fire for God and just uh, love the Lord. No. Yes, yes, I, I love the Lord. But anyway, I, you know, sincerely just, um, you know, want to serve God. But um, I have some individual came to my life, uh, came to the church. And uh, this uh, man, he was, um, you know, just approached me and he said, you know, I want you to be my wife. Well, what I did, I just kind of. You know, I went to my pastor at that time, and I told that uh, pastor, this man, he's kind of, you know, talking to me, and and so 
And so my my pastor, he said at that time, he said, well, bring this person to me. See, this is why it's important for each of us to have a spiritual covering, to have a spiritual authority, and not to be prideful, like uh, Minister Murphy was sharing with us, to be humble. See, God will not gonna make you humble. It's mean that we have to be humble. Okay, we have to be, Lord, you know, I need help in this area. Yeah. And I need to make decision in this area. And I need help in this area. And so you go to the spiritual authority and you present this issue to the spiritual authority because you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to be deceived. See, in a multitude of counselors, this will be saved to you. So you, you present this and you don't want to be deceived and you pure in our heart. It's like, God, I need help in this area. So I present that situation to the, um, you know, to the pastor of that church and his wife, lovely wife. And I said, this person is uh, offering me and I'm not sure about it. Something is not right about that. And, you know, and it's just keep on approaching me and approaching me. And, and it just, and I said, God, I need help in this because that person, I keep saying to this person to go, and it's not leaving. So I went before God, and I said, God Almighty, I need help in this area. And if this person is not sent by you, I ask you, Lord God, to move it. Until now, I don't know where that person disappeared. Gone. I mean, just gone. So, and this is what God wants for each of us, that we when we call up in his name, and when we call up in his name, he will help us and he will rescue us. He will kind of stretch his hand and pull you out. Pull you out when you sincerely before God. If you sincerely before your heavenly Father and say, God, I don't want to live in this sin, but I have weakness in this area and I need help and I and, and asking God forgive me of my sin whatever you're dealing with because he knows he knows don't think if your door is closed and we're not there or the only one there he knows because he's there but when you call up in the Lord and say God because this is about the humble you humble before him and say God I need help in this area I'm asking you to Bring the deliverance. And Father, if this person is bringing me to heal that relationship, I ask you, Lord God, to just get that person out of my life. Whatever that, or, or, or the thing, whatever the thing is, idol, or whatever it is, and God will, and he will set you free. Because for this purpose, the Son of God is manifest. To destroy the works of the devil. That his purpose. Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen. And when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart. And you say, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Create in me a new spirit, Lord. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to be this new creation, Lord. Help me, Lord. Direct me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. And all the truth and nothing but the truth. See, Jesus, he died for your sins, for my sins. But it's not ending in that. We also, when we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we also, we arise with him God gave us a power and authority to walk by faith through the Lord Jesus Christ and we as the people of God we have been given a power and authority as the people of God to submit to God and to resist the devil and every demonic forces of evil they have to flee in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now our spiritual life is very also an important life 
because what we feed our spirit and we know that we like to feed our bodies and many of us feeding our bodies real good right but also it's important to feed our spirit with a good spiritual food right which is we read the word and we pray in the spirit because we are spirit-filled believers spirit-filled believers and we energize and the power of God is coming up in us. We, we, we call up in the name of the Lord. We worship him. Oh, Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise your holy name. We rejoice like Mirister Murphy was talking about. To joy of the Lord. The devil is confused. He brings you all these obstacles in your life some situations in your life and you just rejoice in the Lord. You, oh Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you will bring me out of that situation. I thank you, Lord God, that I have a, my later days will be greater. I thank you, Lord God, I'm going to be a witness for you continually. Oh Father, I thank you, Lord God. I do walk on a victory. Hallelujah. And victory for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God. And you continue to worship the Lord. You continue to build yourself and you 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 pray in a holy language. Hallelujah. You come into the church. You seek in the Lord. You study the scripture. You meditate in the scripture. You speak the scripture from your mouth. You speak over your life. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that I am healed. Hallelujah. I am healed by your stripes. I thank you, Lord God, that I do walk in divine health. Oh, Father, I receive your healing. I receive your healing, Lord. I receive that. I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You pray for people, right? You pray for people. You lay hands on the sick. You pray for people. You pray for your animals, for your dogs, your cats, that none, none of them will be sick too. You know it's working. I have a, a dog some few years back, Yorkies, and this dog, I don't know what happened to that dog, got very sick, throwing up, cannot eat, then stopped moving around, and um, I just feel bad for, for, the, for the dog, and I called, I called Pastor Larry, and I said, Larry, come over here, I, 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 would you pray for my dog? And you know what he said, kind man? He said, it's your dog, you go and pray. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, I went and prayed for my dog. And I went, you know, spent time with my dog, and I laid their hands, and I said, sweetheart, I see you're not feeling very good. Let's I take you outside, and we kind of um, sit with her outside. And, and you know, then I laid their hands. I pray for her. I released the anointing of God, the power of God over that dog. And, I, and then I step out, I left her, and I step out inside the house. Just like I start talking to him. And a minute or two, we hear that bark, 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 bark. Oh, and, and God just touched her. And she lived, I mean, long life. You know, she, she, was, she was blessing. So anyway, what I'm saying God is concerned not just for your life. He is also concerned everything that is in your household. Everything that is in household. And the same thing, you're praying for your family, for your loved ones. You're praying for people who God brings into your path, witnessing to people. Don't be afraid. To lay hands on the people. Release the power of God over the people. Let the healing power will manifest in their bodies. Let the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will glorify continually. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the saver. He is not just the saver. He is also the healer. Hallelujah. He is also bringing the deliverance in the people's lives. Pastor Larry, many times he's telling you about the, uh, different people, how God brings the deliverance. Well, it's available to each of us. When we pray for people, it's Jesus Christ can manifest in the people's lives. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just um, pray for, for you. And I want to continue to encourage you.
to continue to stay in prayer, to be prayerful, to pray without a ceasing, to continue to speak the word and faith over the situations, over the circumstances in your life, and your people who is in your prayer list. Hallelujah. Because God has answered the prayers. And when we go for some testing in our lives, hallelujah, it will be a testimony. Because without the test, you cannot have a testimony. Amen. So when the enemy bring something into your life, hallelujah, start rejoicing. And through that, you're going to have a testimony. Just stay by faith, examine your heart, humble yourself. And you will see how God will bring you through. Hallelujah. God is not giving us a spirit of fear. He wants his people walking by faith. He wants his people not move the mountains. What mountain do you have in your life needs to be moved? Hallelujah. The mountain, you, you speak to that mountain in faith. Hallelujah. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. But we, as the people of God, the just, should live by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you before Pastor Larry come and ministering to us. That I want to pray that the fire of the Holy Spirit will penetrate your spirit like never been before. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I lift unto you, Lord God, your people, every person who is here tonight and those who is watching this broadcast. I ask you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, let the fire of the Holy Spirit move through uh, in this place right now. And those who is watching this broadcast, I thank you, Lord God, the fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that the fire of the Holy Spirit burn everything what is not of God in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the fresh anointing continually. Rest up in your people, Lord God. Fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, God of heaven and earth, we thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your people. I thank you, Lord God, for the breakthroughs, manifestation of your promises, manifest in the lives of your people. I thank you, Lord God, that every works of the devil is being canceled over their lives, over their families, over their children, over their grandchildren, over their siblings, over their finances, over their health. We break every spirit of infirmity. We bind, we loose it, we break it off right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we release your will and we release your plan and we thank you, Lord God, that your people, every person who is here tonight and I pray for those who is watching this broadcast, I thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. They will walk in the truth and nothing but the truth. I thank you. I take authority in the name of Jesus. And I bind that spirit of deception. I bind that lying spirit from the pits of hell. I bind and I loosen the authority in the name of Jesus. And I break it off right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that your people walk in the truth and nothing but the truth. And I thank you, Lord God, for the freedom and for the deliverance for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you a praise, Lord, and we give you a glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. His name should be praised forever and ever. Glory to be God, O oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. God is so good. And he is faithful. Amen and amen to that. Well, Pastor Larry is here. Amen. He's going to bless us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I ain't going to be blessing that much tonight. Well, glory. So we've heard from Dr. Murphy and from Dr. Olga. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes it's good to, to uh, just share. And I just feel impressed to, to allow 
you all to have a little say so today because you guys are ordained ministers. And I just wanted to uh, let you exercise your gift a little bit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm, going, I'm not going to keep you long tonight because y'all have already had uh, 20, 35, 40 minutes already. <laughs> so I'm not going to keep you long. I just want to bring you back to the book of Ephesians. Amen. And we're going to be there. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to fresh up a little bit. Amen. Then we're going to ease on out of here because I want to take you back over to help you to identify with who you are. Then we're going to get on out of here. Ephesians chapter, look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. Because I've been dealing with this, I've been dealing with the armor of God, uh, the, the spiritual warfare for a while. And, uh, and I'm going to just share just a little bit along that line today because of, uh, because of the time that we're in and the way the world is going right now. And Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse, look at chapter 2 and verse number 1. And it says, You had he quickened who were dead in trespass and sin, wherein in time past you walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the church of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But God, I like this because this, this, is, this is direct, this is being direct. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. That's direct, amen. He's speaking direct to us. Wherewith he loved us. Even when we were what? Dead in sins. In other words, not just one little thing that you were doing, but you were doing a few things. You were dead in sins. Amen. Amen. And had quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. Thank God for grace. Amen. Because Alan, he's still, he's saved today because of grace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse number six in. And had raised us up. Where? Together. Together. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are seated together in Christ Jesus in heavenly places that we are seated in position of authority. God has given you authority in this earth. God has given you authority to dominate this world system. But you've been more concentrating on the world system rather than what God has given you as a child of God. Amen. As a child of God, you've been given the power to rule and reign as kings and priests. Amen. But you rather walk around talking about what you can't do and what you and, 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 and nobody will give you a, a chance. Don't talk like that because you're going to find yourself getting exactly what you're saying. Amen. Because your words are, are going to create your atmosphere. Your words are going to create your atmosphere. Notice what he says right here now in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 9, I mean, verse number 1. <clears throat> in Luke chapter 9, verse number 1, and it says, <clears throat> And when he then he then he called the twelve disciples together and gave them power, gave them power and authority. He gave them power and authority. Now notice what he gave them power and authority for. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. So if you're going to walk in the will of God during this time of these last uh, in these last days. It's time for you to realize that you're not only supposed to acknowledge your salvation, but you're supposed to minister to the sick. It's your, it's your, it's your job. You're supposed to minister to the sick as a child of God, as a born-again child of God. That is your obligation. Amen. Amen. That is your obligation. He gave us power. He gave us authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Amen. Amen. So y'all look at me like y'all don't know like, like oh, well, y'all better watch it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because God is serious about what he said in his word. And we're in the last days, folks. It's time for the church to come to the to come to realization that God has given them the power. Amen. Now notice what he said in the book of Mark, chapter 
Mark chapter oh two 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 Mark chapter uh, uh, eleven. Mark chapter eleven. Amen. Verse number twenty three. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Amen. But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. You see, you got to understand what God is saying to you because you see, that's why that's why you got to that's why that's why he that's why he said to study to show thyself approved, a workman of God, need not be ashamed of writing by the word of truth. Because, see, if the word is going to come alive in you, like the Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God. Verse 14 said, and the word was made flesh. Amen. That's Jesus Christ that he's talking, talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. But then when you begin to speak the word of God in faith, the word of God turned, it, 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 it comes out how? It comes out in spirit. You speak the word of God in faith, it comes out in spirit. Woo. Glory to God. And that spirit creates the atmosphere around you. That's why it's so important that we understand the, 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 that you have been given authority and power. And when you exercise the word of God in faith, you are, when you begin to speak the word of God, you are releasing the spirit of faith. How? Through your words. Through your words. Amen. God's creative power is in your mouth. Hallelujah. So that's why, that's why we have to understand that as, as children of God, seated at the right hand of the Lord, that we have been given power and authority. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. Because, mm. see, now, 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 we, now that we understand that, now that we understand that, now, now look what it says right here. In 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 the Mark in a uh, 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 Luke Gospel chapter chapter ten, Amen. Luke chapter ten. Uh, y'all know y'all know what it said, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right there in the Bible. That's right. <laughs> it's right there in the Bible. Luke chapter ten, Amen. Notice what it says now. After these things, verse number one. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before the face into every sin and praise, but that He Himself would come. Amen. So the Lord, he sent them to demonstrate or to operate in the anointing and the power of what he has spoken to them. Because Jesus had not died and the Spirit of God had not, been, had not come alive in their spirit yet. They only had to operate on the words that Jesus was speaking to them. Amen. Just like when Peter still come out of the boat. He had to walk on the word that Jesus spoke to him. Come. So he sent his disciples out. He gave them instructions. Now they are out there operating, getting the work done simply on the words that Jesus gave them. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And this is the same thing God wants you to understand today because, you see, he wants you to get the work done that, he got, that he's given you to do. And he knows that you can't do it without him. <clears throat> because without him, you can't do nothing. Especially when it comes to kingdom work. Amen. So he said in verse, in verse number two, he said, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great. In other words, there's a whole lot of work to accomplish, folks. The harvest is truly great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors unto his harvest. Go your way, I send you forth as lamb among wolves. Amen. And he tell them where to go and how to go. Amen. <clears throat> and then in verse number in verse number five said, Whatsoever house ye enter, 
say peace be to this house. In other words, in other words, you are releasing that peace that you're walking in upon that house. Now, if they come out fuzzing and arguing and stuff like that, one of them, and running you away, you recall your peace. And as you leave in that house, as you leave in that place, and what part of the scripture, what, what second of the scripture, is that as you, as you leave that place, shake off the dust from the bottom of your feet as a testimony against them. Amen. So, in other words, in other words, you got to be willing to obey what God gave you to do. You got to be willing to do it regardless of how insignificant it might look or how it might sound. Amen. You got you got to be willing to obey God regardless. Amen. And you got to be willing to say, Lord, you said it, I believe it, and that sells it. I'm going to do it. <clears throat> Amen. And that's when you're going to find out that you're not alone. Because he's going to be back. He's going to back you up. He's going to back you up. Amen. So notice in verse number six said, For if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. God wants you to be his voice. He wants you to be his instrument. He wants you to be the deliverance voice in this land. The voice of deliverance. The voice of healing. That's who you are. Amen. 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 That's who you are. And then if you want to pray for your dog, you can pray for your dog. <laughs> you ain't got one? Well, that, uh, that might be a good thing for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But God is but God is calling us to a place in Him in this coming year that we've never walked before. God is calling us to a place in Him we've never walked before. Because God <clears throat> He's gonna visit his people, and he's going to demonstrate his glory and his power through those that would allow him. Because there's men that's not going to allow him. Because they don't, they really don't believe. They really not, they really not born again. And therefore they don't believe. Amen. But he said, Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents. Verse number 19. Behold, I give unto you power to shred over serpents and over scrubbers and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you don't have to be concerned about something trying to hurt you because you're trying to obey God. Amen. God will watch over his word. <clears throat> and even if something do, if even if someone do rise up against you, don't 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 be afraid. Peter loved not his life even unto death. Amen. Mm -hmm. So if it costs you your life, don't worry about it. You'll be going to a better place. You'll be going to a better place. And you're going to make it by God's grace, not by mine. And it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. And I want to encourage you. I know that I don't believe nothing like that going to happen to any of you, though, but, but I want to encourage you. Should the enemy rise up against you through some man or some woman and you're not able to defend yourself, don't try to think of what you should say, but the Lord will give you what in that same hour what you need to say. I've been in that situation before. And I know God came through just like that. I didn't, I didn't think, wow, where did those words come from? Amen. Right out of my spirit. Amen. Right out of my spirit. God spoke. Hallelujah. Amen. What time is it? What time is it? Like 730. What, well, we about, we about ready to we about ready to close it down now because we I don't want to take you too long. 940. It's 940, yeah. 840, I mean. It's 840. Uh, 740. <clears throat> okay, then 740. Yeah. Don't want 
good, good idea. Amen. So now, so now let's go ahead on and uh, take it by evening offering. I just, I just wanted to just put y'all back, get you back on track because we, we are dealing with the, with something here that I believe that's going to benefit you in the long run because you need to understand that you are a child of authority because you're a child of God. And I thank you, uh, Pastor Oaken and Minister Murphy, for your words <clears throat> of encouragement. And I believe that those words are going to help someone. Glory to God. Today is the what? Third. The third. together if you're going to if you're with us by the internet you want to sow a seed go to my website labrigerministries.com use your atm card your credit card to plant that seed or if you want to sow a seed uh through the mail you can send it through the mail system that's p.o box 417913 sacramento california 95841 amen and so we believe in god for uh our lights to stay on our doors to stay open so you guys Go ahead and help us out. Amen. We appreciate that. Glory to God. Because we serve a good God, and he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think, according to his power that works within us. Amen. Let's stretch our hand toward this offering. Amen. Father, we thank you once again. Hallelujah. For all that you've done and all that you're doing. Because we are your people and the sheep of your pastors. When we give into this offering, we're not given to man, but we're given to you. And as we give, Father, we believe that it shall be given back to us according to your word. Luke 6, 38. It shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into our bosom. And Lord, you said with what measure we meet, it shall be measured to us again. And you said that we sow bountifully, we shall reap bountifully. We show cheerfully. You said you make all grace abound toward us. We have an all sufficiency in all things. May abound to every good work. So, Father, we believe your word and we stand on your word. And we declare, Father, that every need is met. Every need is met in Jesus' mighty name. And, God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for it. And, God, I bless your people who are given, who are sowing today. I bless your people. Father, let the finances begin to multiply back into their life, back into their account, back into their wallet, back into their pockets, Lord God, and let them begin to experience overflow. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And I call it in. I declare that it's done. Now, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. You with us today? You never, you never been born again? You never been saved? You want to get born again? You want to get saved today? Then ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. You want to know how? Just follow this I'm going to show you how right now to follow these instructions. Just follow my prayer. Amen. And if you never asked Jesus Christ to come in your heart, just say this prayer. Or maybe you have asked Jesus to come in your heart, but you back it. In other words, you turned away from God, but right now you want to return to God. You want to turn your heart back to God. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Oh, say that again. Come into my heart. And created me 
a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you came. You gave your life for my sin. And today, I accept the sacrifice that you gave on my part. Jesus, I believe that I am born again. I am saved because of what you did. I believe it, and that sells it. Amen. <laughs> right, amen, amen, amen. If you believe it in your heart that Jesus died for your sin, if you don't have no doubt about that, then let me tell you something, you are saved. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God don't lie. He can't lie. Amen. He cannot lie. Now, if anyone here tonight, you have you have, you you need prayer, I'll pray for you right now. If you need me to cast the devil out of you, I'll cast the devil out of you right now, too. Yeah, because I feel like, I, I feel like, I feel like, <laughs> you don't want to go tonight. <laughs> okay, let's pray for these by the internet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are with us by the internet. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that your hand continue to rest upon them. I break every demonic force that is working against their minds, their will, their emotions. And I declare and decree, Father, that tonight, Father, that we will not give up. We will always triumph because we have put our confidence and our trust in you because you overcame the world and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith and God we thank you for that in Jesus name now bless your people I bless them right now in Jesus name amen amen God bless you thank y'all for joining us tonight and I look forward to seeing you guys again on Sunday we love you until then bye bye